I'm Roz. I wanted to talk about um, managing your mental health with the phase lifting of lockdown. Very recent announcement and coronavirus has plunged the world into uncertainty and constant news about the pandemic can feel relentless. All of this is taking a toll on people's mental health, particularly those already living with conditions like anxiety, OCD and depression, but to name but a few. So how can we protect our mental health? So being concerned about the news is understandable, but for many people, it can make existing mental health conditions worse. Though with anxiety, the fear of being out of control and unable to tolerate uncertainty are common characteristics of many anxiety disorders. So it's understandable that many individuals with pre-existing anxiety are facing more challenges at the moment. A lot of anxiety is rooted in worrying about the unknown and waiting for something to happen. Almost fear of fear itself, if you like. So on waiting for something to happen, some panic bought more loo rolls than they may use over the next five years. Never mind the pasta mountain that some have stocked up on. All concerned that there would not be enough supplies to go around. Misinformation or to follow what others thought was a good idea at the time. I believe we have altered how we shop now. Again, back to how can we protect our mental health? One of the main factors that will be involved in managing this is to limit the news and be careful what you read. Reading lots of news about things beyond our control is not healthy for any of us. Some of the news seems to be encouraging, worrying with some biased messages. If we limit time on watching the news, that can be helpful and we can stay informed, though not unnecessarily so. Otherwise, our thoughts can catastrophize and lead us down a path of worst case scenario. I would encourage the same behavior on limiting time on social media. Yes, of course, stay connected, though the best stay away from a lot of negative stories. There are many sources and useful sites to check on if you are worried about your own mental health concerns or you might well be concerned about someone else you know. Um, and those sites can include helping support you to help yourself and others. Limit the amount of time you spend reading or watching things which aren't making you feel better. Perhaps decide on a specific time to check in with the news. Once a day, I would say, will be more than enough. There's a lot of misinformation swirling around. Stay informed by sticking to trusted sources of information such as government and NHS websites and MIND websites. Some will be anxious about returning to our previous routines. Using public transport, allowing children play together, waiting in queues, visiting supermarkets or doctor surgeries, children returning to school, or teachers returning to school, the eventual lifting of lockdown, which will happen in a phased way, all with social distancing in mind. How many observe what social distancing even looks like? What is two metres or six foot apart in old metrics? What is that in practice? Many seem to encroach on our space either unwittingly or they don't notice they have drifted to less than two metres. If this happens, Rather than be wound up, move away without a social distancing strop or harsh words. We are all experiencing this pandemic together. I mentioned earlier how important it is to stay connected with people. So staying in touch with those you care about will help maintain good mental health during the phase lifting of lockdown. You may be shielding and are going through this alone in self-isolation and staying connected with others is hugely important and beneficial to all of us. Agree regular check-in times and feel connected to the people around you. This can help take you away from overthinking and is helpful to others too as a kindness. Having a routine and making each sure each day has some variety. If you are desk-based, regular stretching and looking away from the screen and into the distance and back again can help soothe and prevent eye strain or dry eyes. If you are working whilst there are small children needing you and perhaps older children where you are homeschooling as well as working from home, 
that is understandably going to be a stretch. You are going to do the best that you can. Having a calm down area, if there are temper tantrums or meltdowns, that could be either yours or theirs. Um, some might well have a calm down corner and everybody knows what it's for and um, to take a few minutes to actually go there and just re rebalance yourself. And if this, the child needs to, to calm down, they will get to understand that that is something that will be helpful for them as well. For some people, it might end up actually feeling like quite a productive or restful period. You could work through your to-do list or have a proper clear out. After several weeks, you may have already cleared everything and tried many other ways to keep your mental health in a balanced place. When you are connecting with others, try to allow a few minutes only on the pandemic, if at all, and chat through how and what you've been up to as you would do so that the news is not ever present or magnified. Avoiding burnout. With weeks and possibly months of the corona pandemic ahead, it's important to have downtime. So Mind recommends continuing to access nature and sunlight wherever possible. Do exercise, eat well and stay hydrated. So here are some hints and tips, basically from the CBT model, so Cognitive Behaviour Therapy, where it, it can help us to think about how we respond and react during this time. So this is the STOP model, that's S-T-O-P-P. -P. So firstly, stop if you find yourself running away with your thoughts or being particularly anxious. Take a moment, take a breath and concentrate on the out breath. O, observe, what am I thinking? What am I reacting to? What am I feeling in my body? P, pull back, put in some perspective. Try to see the bigger picture. Is this fact or opinion? How would someone else see this? So P, practice what works. What is the best thing to do for me, for others, for the situation? These are some tips of working through the lifting of lockdown and reintegrating. I believe some will be changed by what they have experienced and many will be changed for the better because we are told our mental health will be affected does not mean it has to be. Self-care and compassion and being kind to others will help release us and many others to a better way of being. Take it gently, observe the social distancing, Whilst we trust the scientists and medics to find a vaccine that may be a while off, though we have every reason to believe that it will happen, the sooner the better. Thank you.